MedTech World, the brand that has been connecting healthcare tech professionals for a couple of years now. Through innovative devices and diagnostics awareness, the summit delivers value to patients, healthcare professionals and healthcare systems. MedTech World brings together leading companies, startups and investors of the sectors, all under one roof. Today we will have the pleasure of sitting down with Dr. Dylan Attard, who is leading Sigma Healthcare Vertical and who will tell us much more about the vision behind the brand. Dylan, thank you for accepting the invitation. It's a pleasure. I think what we would like to know where and how the journey started. Yes, of course. So, I mean, I graduated as a doctor around four years ago. I finished basic surgical training um, just a couple of months ago. Healthcare, digital health and medtech and uh, even more entrepreneurship were, all, were always kind of passion hobbies of mine. But I always saw myself kind of limited working in a clinical, wo in a clinical ward or, or a hospital. And I always wanted to look beyond. And that is when, I mean, last year, Feb around February of last year, I joined Sigma to basically lead their medtech and digital health efforts. And it's giving me an opportunity to be able to um, network with the general industry, with the international industry in general, and get to know what people, companies, startups are doing within the digital health industry. And it's been an exciting journey so far. But obviously you being a surgeon and now you go into this entrepreneurial world, mm -hmm. like, was it like a, a lot of things to learn for you? There's a lot of similarities, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, um, and a lot of different things, working in surgery and hospital. It used to give me that kind of adrenaline rush, especially I, where I used to work long hours, um, working in duties, waking up in the middle of the night to attend to some um, urgent matter. Um, so it did have kind of its advantages as well as, I would say, disadvantages, but trying to compare both my work now working in a different industry, or say in the inter entrepreneurship industry, it's the business industry at the end of the day, um, matters, I mean, problems arise on a daily basis. So in terms of how I used to um, potential, for example, seek and ask a couple of questions to a patient to see um, what's, what's wrong with the patient. I'm trying to adopt these skills which I learned um, in hospital, be it through emergency situations, be it through asking his pa pa patient histories, um, to try and adopt them to this industry, to the, to the digital health industry, to try and understand what companies want, what um, startup founders are, what investors want at the end of the day. So I am trying to adopt um, the skills that I have learned in, in hospital and clinic setting to this industry. It's like I said, I mean, it's been an exciting journey. I'm getting to meet um, a lot of international, I would say fellow doctors just as me, who have um, finished some kind of training in their lives and are now looking to expand beyond working in hospital to try and create a global change within the digital health industry. Um, and I feel that through what I'm doing at Sigma, through Sigma's resources, we're giving them a platform to be able to do this on an international scale. And that is what we plan to do in the next couple of weeks and, and months. Nice. So I think the awareness is growing, so obviously you're doing like a very good job. What would you say been achieved for the medtech world so far? So, I mean, if I had to look back around two, around two years ago before COVID, I would have never imagined to be, to be, to be here, to be working um, with Sigma, trying to curate our own events. Last November, we did a, a two-day conference here in Malta. Um, and up a couple of months after, we're in Dubai. There's June planned in, 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 in um, to Toronto, planned in June. So, I mean, in terms of what we're trying, what has been achieved so far, I think, especially in terms of how the industry has changed after COVID, everyone started to realize the immense potential of digital health, of technology being applied within healthcare. And, I, and that, I think, has pushed, even, even from a patient's perspective, before patients, especially, I mean, speaking from, from someone working in the Maltese healthcare industry, before, um, no one was really aware of what digital health was, but um, especially in the beginning of, of, of the initial wave of the COVID pandemic, for example, people were starting to realize how technology was helping governments, was helping countries fight, fight COVID. So the patients nowadays are, are, are more aware of what digital health is and they, uh, they themselves are trying to ask um, their, 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 their countries, their respective healthcare systems to adopt more digital health technologies. And that is what we're trying to do through our conference, be it helping companies and, and startups and, uh, and digital health um, companies in, on an international basis to promote what they're doing, as well as patients to have a voice. Um, because I think when it comes to um, the healthcare industry, especially in the past couple of years, 
it was very much secluded within hospitals, within clinics, and they weren't integrating much with be it the private industry or the patients themselves. And this has to change, and that's what MedTech World Summit is doing, giving a voice to everyone to try and create a, um, a change from the ground up. So the roadmap for now is like big focus on the events, but what other like a future plans you would have? Ah, yes, of course. I mean, I wouldn't call them events, to, to be honest. Um, I, that's, I like to use the word opportunities. The opportunities for everyone, be it for companies who have already consolidated their business and are looking to expand beyond, be it for um, new startup founders who are looking to attract investors, or be it, um, be it for patients who, for example, are suffering from chronic diseases or from diseases which they might not be so common. So companies don't do much research on them because it isn't worth it for them, especially if there's a small patient cohort. So what we're trying to do essentially, and what um, I've, we've tried to do last November and are even working harder for, to do this year, is to not only organize an event in Malta, revolving around Malta and the digital health industry around us, but try to, especially through the roadshow which we're going. And like I said, I mean, a month ago we were in Dubai, we had a conference there. I got to network with a lot of um, individual people based in Dubai uh, and the Middle East, uh, and I got to know how they tackle the healthcare industry. And we've, we have already invited them to attend, to, to come over to Malta this November. In June, we're going to be in Toronto. I'm going to be doing the same, um, and Serbia in summer. So our, we're using Malta, our, our Malta conference, as a, as, a, as a base within Europe to be able to attract all these different industry or ecosystems, I would say, from different countries to come over to Malta. Um, and share, the share, share their experiences, knowledge and opportunities to eventually improve healthcare on a global, on a global scale. So of course you are very welcoming to like a businesses and individuals as well to join or support the medical. Right? I mean, I, I hate treating healthcare as a business. At the end of the day, I see healthcare as a very different industry than the other industries. Um, healthcare essentially is a basic right for everyone, um, including for people in well-established countries as well as those in other, um, I would say, less countries which are less lucky th th than we are. Um, so what we're trying to do is um, trying to, like I said again, create a global change and try to, within the healthcare industry, because digital health essentially, it won't just improve um, a country's healthcare system, it can actually give healthcare to those countries um, that, that they don't have any type of access to healthcare. Like for example, a simple use of, of, of Digital health would be telemedicine. Um, we're seeing more and more companies um, launching within um, countries that, um, large countries, be it um, South Africa, for example, um, in which they don't have access to specialized doctors. And through telemedicine, for example, they can um, reach a doctor or, or agent or, or agent or, or, or agent healthcare. So I, th I mean, essentially, like I said, I don't treat this as a, as a kind of business, as an, as an industry, but we're here to try and through our events, especially through Sigma's international reach, we're um, trying to connect the, the international healthcare industry to come together, um, get to connect with patients, get to connect with um, not just healthcare, but um, potentially ph pharmaceutical companies as well, which have a lot of say within, the, within our healthcare system, and try to work on synergies together. I think what we would be very interesting to know from you, what is your opinion on all these emerging technologies, like AR, uh, VR, which one of those have the biggest potential, in your opinion? Mm, interesting question, actually, and to, to, to be quite, quite, quite frank with you, I personally don't have um, a favorite kind of technology within digital health, which I, which I, I'm focusing on, and especially through our events. That's 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 why we tend to spread our content over over um, two days, usually at our conferences, with multiple stages running in parallel and multiple workshops to be able to cover digital health holistically, including plant medicine. Um, so it's not specifically focused um, on digital health. But anyways, I mean, just to get back to your question, in my opinion, I think, especially when it comes to VR, we've seen some very good at, um, adoptions of VR technology when it comes to patients where, um, patients suffering from chronic conditions and um, possibly from severe cancer, cancer cases and palliative patients. Um, and this VR is helping them to alleviate, to alleviate them from, from, from suffering from pain. And in fact, I mean, even based in Malta, there's um, research ongoing within the University of Malta how to adopt um, VR 
to, to try and help these palliative patients. And, and I've worked actually for three months in, in palliative care and to see, to see patients nearing their, the, the end of their life crying to, to take more medications. Um, and there's a, there's a limit in terms of how we can prescribe medications to someone. Because at the end of the day, whenever you prescribe new medicine or increasing doses, there's always going to be um, side effects, be it the patient not um, losing consciousness, I mean, not knowing where, where he is or not being able to recognize his relatives. So technology um, is indeed helping such patients, uh, potentially VR. Another interesting, <coughs> another interesting use of, I mean, the, the latest emerging technologies, um, and I think the world has yet to discover the, the, the potential is when it comes to not, specific, not just blockchain, but as well when it comes to, for example, the metaverse and then NFTs in healthcare. Um, they're doing research at the moment in terms of trying to, for example, put um, someone's medical records, personal me medical records on NFTs and that NFT would belong to the patient and the patient would essentially be owning his data and he would know in terms of which companies is using his own personal med me um, me medical history, for example. Um, so I think, I mean, if, if I had to choose, apart from the obvious telemedicine, which I think uh, even Malta, at the beginning of the pandemic, we experienced quite a rise on telemedicine solutions. Doctors were, not, not just doctors, healthcare practitioners were, um, were adopting to consulting patients online using telemedicine. So that is the kind of most basic adoption of digital health, especially in Malta. Um, something else would be VR, I think, would be my, mo my, my second most favorite. It sounds uh, very inspirational. I mean, <laughs> Thank you for the insight. <laughs> I, I, tend, I, I feel quite lucky to be, to, to be in this position and getting to know what the rest of the world is doing. I mean, Malta Center is a small island, we're very limited to in terms to how we kind of um, get to meet new technologies and new companies. Um, thankfully, we have a very good healthcare system. Um, it's free for, 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 for everyone. Um, whenever there's some sort of specialized treatment, which the, our local healthcare practitioners don't specialize in. We refer patients abroad to, 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 to other countries, so we, are very, we should be very thankful of our healthcare system. But that doesn't mean that we should stop there. Um, we should continue seeking to introduce more digital health solutions, and potentially, I think Malta um, should, should prove to be quite a very good test base for companies to test base their solutions here. And I think this is one of the points that me and, and my colleague Ryan, who's trying to um, take this as and give this message through, through our events, um, especially our main flagship one in Malta, for, to invite companies um, to launch their, their, their solution here and test base it on the Maltese population. And I mean, something that is, this is most often overlooked by companies, but Malta, we're, I mean, a small, essentially a small population, around 500, 600,000 with expats living here. Um, but we all speak English, we have Euro as our currency, um, we have a very good heterogeneity of, of gene pool because there's a lot of foreigners, so it's not specifically testing one population and close with, within itself. Um, and I think this is a very good message actually to, um, to, to portray through, through, this, um, through this interview that we, and essentially the Maltese government, is very keen on inviting digital health companies to launch here, thus base their solution through our hospital, um, through our clinics, launch them even in a B2C to, to patients directly. And then after, after validating their, their solution, they can eventually open to, to other countries. Um, and that is something that we've worked on last year in our November summit and that we're working even harder this year to pass the measures to, to, to such companies um, co coming over to Malta. Fantastic. Mm, I think I would like to know like, what would be your like, ideal future vision for the medical sector? For the medical sector, I mean, I think what and I'm, we're trying to focus it on, focus on it this year actually to give pa patients um, a voice in, in all of this because I think I mean so we've started some years ago as in a couple of years ago there I mean especially in a small country like Malta there weren't any um, digital health solutions, much digital health solutions and now we're starting to see many companies, be it telemedicine companies, companies working in personalized medical records, um, a, lot of com a lot of companies are, are being founded within the digital health industry, but how many of those are actually looking at what the patients need at the end of the day? 
Because it's one thing looking at what the healthcare practitioners want to smoothen their, their, their workflow, to make their daily, daily lives at work um, um, easier. But at the end of the day, we should tailor this to patients. And most often, patients are very shy to actually speak. Um, even when we try to invite them to any, to any of our events and conferences. Um, I mean, when it comes to healthcare practitioners, company founders, startups, investors, they all, they all want to be on stage to promote whatever they're doing. But when it comes to patients, um, to be actually on stage, um, participating in a panel, discussing some particular technology which revolves around what they're, what they're suffering from, they're most often shy, and that is what we'd like to um, uh, focus more on this year. So, concluding all, I think the uh, future looks very bright. Right. I, 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 would, I would hope so, I guess. Um, I'm, like, I, like, like I said, I, I think we're in a very good position to use Sigma's resources um, to grow MedTech, our, our conference brand, exponentially this year. Um, and something, a value which I think anyone who's participating in, in our conferences needs to see is that we, we're not revolving our, our, our events focused on just one country, one territory, but through our roadshow, through what, we're, what we did in Dubai, what we're going to be doing later on this year, be it Toronto or Serbia, we're, um, uh, we're taking it upon ourselves to connect with these different industries within different countries and corners of the, of the world, actually, um, so that we can eventually connect them together through, through, through our events and opportunities. Um, and um, I mean, I'm very excited to continue working on this. Um, hopefully, our flagship Malta conference this year will uh, reach whatever we have in mind, um, and we'll take it on from there, I guess. Sky is the limit, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, thank you very much. That's all fascinating. And that's it for today. Guys, head out to the website of MedTech World to find out much more about the healthcare of tomorrow. <music>